glove. Okay, today we are going to be loom knitting fingered gloves. Now, <laughs> this video has taken a little bit longer to come to you than a lot of my other videos, and that is because the working out this pattern has been a few try runs, and there is a reason for that. It is because every video I have seen, tutorial I've come across, trying to make fingered gloves in the past has involved using a 31 peg loom which then involves a lot of kind of decreasing to get it to fit the um wrist um and just it, generally looking at it as someone with very small hands I couldn't get them to work for me so after much after many try runs and many failures, I've worked out how to do it on a 24 peg loom. Now, it isn't entirely simple. It's, you know, it is 100% doable, even if you're a complete beginner. But it does involve a little bit of moving stitches around. So this video is probably going to be quite a long one. <laughs> um, because there are a lot of bits where I'm going to have to do it step by step by step a little bit like we did on the first video I ever did with working a heel getting the fingers to work does take a little bit a little bit of time so what you need to do the equipment you need for this is a 24 peg loom a your knitting hook a darning needle you don't need the scrap of fabric I just have that to keep it there scissors yarn now I am making this to match the one I've just showed you. So I'm using a standard DK weight yarn. That's absolutely fine. However, I think the perfect weight yarn for this project is actually Aran. Chunky may be a little tight on your hands. If you've got small hands like me, you're probably fine using Chunky. Um, this is a general size for a adult hand. Um, it's quite easy to adapt it by adding in extra rows here and there if you need to make it bigger. But... In a perfect world, get iron weight. If not, DK or Chunky is, is it's going to work. It'll be fine, okay? Um, pen, piece of scrap paper to keep track of your rows. And you are going to want to keep track of your rows on this one. Um, also, I have four to half a dozen safety pins here. If you don't have safety pins, use stitch markers. If you don't have stitch markers, open up some like bobby pins, some hair grips. They'll work. What we need to do is we need to be able to hold one or two stitches here and there to move them around. And basically anything you can clip around a stitch so it doesn't disappear will work. Okay. I'm using these because I didn't have many stitch markers and they're very inexpensive and most people have them lying around. The other thing that might come in helpful for you is a, a smaller crochet hook. Anything between a size four and a size seven will work. If you don't have a crochet hook, you can actually do the cast off we're going to be doing on a standard knitting hook. I've done it before on a standard knitting hook, but the crochet hook, a lot of people find makes our life easier. So if you've got one, grab it. If you haven't, don't worry about it. <laughs> we can make it work on this. Okay. And I will show you on both. Okay. So that is all the equipment you need. Okay, to start off, we're going to put in our standard slip knot. Now, usually when I start projects, we use this here as a holder peg. What we're actually going to do is use the slip stitch as our first cast on. So it's going to go straight on the peg and it's actually going to be knitted. Okay. Okay. Now, the one thing we're going to be referring to a lot in this video is the number of pegs. So I always start the one after this one. So not the one immediately above it. But this I always have as peg one. If you want to have this as peg one, it's fine. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Any of them can be. But for easiness sake, I have this one. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to cast on pegs one to eight just in a standard a wrap so one two three four five six seven eight okay one two three four five six seven eight great and now what i'm going to do is i am going to knit these in the flat backwards and forwards 
for 15 rows okay so for 15 so whenever we're knitting in the flat we use the sort of first or last last one wrapped off the last row first one you're looking at we always use the end ones as turning pegs so that one just kind of gets left there we use it to turn and we come back And then we knit them off. And that is row one. Row one, make a note of that on my scrap piece of paper. And then, as I said, we use the turning peg. Use this one as a turning peg now. And we wrap them all back. And then we're going to just knit these off for row two. Okay, so fairly straightforward, knitting backwards and forwards in the flat for 15 rows. I'm going to leave you there. Once you've done your 15 rows, come back to the video and we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so I've now done my 15, 15 rows. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this. So I'm going to leave... A little bit of working length on there and then I'm just going to cut it and that's just going to tuck down into the middle there okay now what we need to do is we're going to take two stitches from each end and we're going to fold them back so we're literally going to take these two and fold them over and take these two and fold them over okay so the way that we do that is we go from peg two and we're going to lift it off and we're going to pop it on peg three. And then we're going to take peg one. We're going to pop it off and put it on peg four. Yeah, don't worry that that's come loose. It's just because it's the last one. All we have to do is find our little end bit and pull it tight. It'll all come back in. That's fine. Yeah. And then the same from the other end. We're going to take our peg four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to take peg seven and pop it across onto peg six. We do have to pull the wool a little tight there. That's fine. And then we're going to go from eight across to five. So you end up with two stitches on pegs three, four, five, and six. Yeah, that's what your piece looks like now. Good. We're done for, with that bit for now. Moving on to the next section. We're going to pop another slip knot in. And again, we're going to use this as an actual cast on stitch. So we're going to pop this now onto peg seven, I believe. Let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cast on from pegs 7 to 11. So 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we've got five stitches there. And again, what we're going to do is we're going to work them backwards and forwards in the flat for 18 rows. Okay, so I'll leave my turn and peg on the end there. We wrap the first row. Knit it off. And that is row one. So I'm going to mark that down on here. And then go back in for row two. And again, I'm going to carry on backwards and forwards like this until I've done whoop, until I've done 18 one eight rows. Okay, so I'll let you go and do that. And I will meet you back here. When we're at that point okay we've now done our 18 and this is what our piece looks like at this point same as last time we're going to cut the yarn leaving a bit of working length now this time we're just going to go to the last two stitches so which i believe are 10 and 11 let's count them so we've got one two three four five six seven eight 
9, 10, 11. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to move stitches 10 and 11 onto 9 and 8. Okay. So we're going to start by moving 10 over to 9 and then taking 11 across to 8. And again, stitch comes loose. Just pull that and tighten it in. And this is what the work looks like now. Okay. And again, we're just going to move on to the next section, which is where we now cast on from pegs 10 to 14 and wrap for 15 rows. So put in an A wrap, not an A wrap. Oh, where am I? Put in a slip knot. <laughs> I've had some time off over Christmas. I'm still nursing a bit of a cold. You can forgive me. Okay, so, yeah, so we're going from 10 to 14. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which is the one right next to where we are. But it's nice to count them so we always know we're in the right place. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And we're going to knit these in the flat as we have for the last two. And we're going to knit these for 15 rows. Now, it might sound like I'm reading a pattern. That's because it is. Because this is one of the few instances where I've actually had to write things down for myself. Now, because I'm trying to make more and more videos for you guys. And YouTube has got a little bit insane. And started taking up a bit of time. I've had a look at my Patreon account. Which I set up a while ago but never really used. Um... And, and I've kind of revamped my Patreon a little bit. Sorry, there were three on there. Ignore those, they were for the last one. I'm just a bit OCD, we'll make sure they're down. Um, and what I'm going to do is, I am going to... If you would like to support me on Patreon, I'll put a link in the description. And anyone who supports me will be able, as a bit of a perk, to download a written instructions sheet and like a stitch chart so you can follow along bit by bit you could even tick it off stitch by stitch if you wanted to um it's pdf so you can print it out and then you can just kind of go through the pattern bit by bit and follow it along from there so that will be in the link so yeah i'm just going backwards and forwards in the flat again for 15 rows so you carry on with that and i'll meet you back here Okay, so we've done our 15 rows there. This is what we're currently working with. So once again, we're going to take our yarn. We're going to cut it with a little bit of working length on. And we're going to take our last two stitches and fold them over. Um, so that is pegs number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we're going to take 13 and 14. And fold them on to 12 and 11. Is that right? Yes, that's right. So. We're going to take 13 and pop that on to 12. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Come on. There we go. And take 14 and pop it onto 11. So, this is what we're working with. Now, what we're going to do is take basically the same, same again, but are very similar, not exactly the same. We're going to take our yarn, we're going to pop a slip knot in. Again, we're going to use this as the first stitch in our cast on so it's going to sit on here and we are going to cast on pegs 13 to 20 so a total of eight stitches a total of eight stitches going from 13 to 20 so we have peg 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 so you can see that's eight stitches and we're going to knit them backwards and forwards in the flat as we have been with the other sections 
And we're going to do that for 12 rows. One, two, so 12 rows this time. Okay, so again, using the last one as the turning peg. And just backwards and forwards for 12 rows. So you go and do those 12 rows. And then I will meet you back here. Okay, we've done 12. <laughs> 12 rows there. So again, we're going to leave a little working length, but cut our yarn. We're going to take our last two pegs. And we're going to flip them over onto ones next to them so these are pegs <laughs> but that's easy i'll go backwards now 24 23 22 21 29 we're going to take 19 and 20 and we're going to pop them onto 18 and 17 okay and again if this last one comes loose it's actually easier to move it but all we do is we just pull that working length we left and tighten it back up. Now these, if you're looking at this going, what the heck is this, Lily? <laughs> okay, These are our fingers, okay? If I do that, suddenly... Oh, wait, do it the other way. If, <laughs> if I do that, and there, suddenly this kind of starts to make sense, yes? <laughs> okay. Now we've got those on there, we're going to go on with the next section, which is, we are starting at peg, there where are we, that's 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19. we are casting on pegs 19 to 23, so we're going to make a slip knot. We're going to use this as our first cast on, so that goes on peg 19. I'm just going to tighten that up a little. Oop, there we go, 19. And we're going to 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So we're back to five, five stitches here. And what we're going to do is we're going to knit these as we have been with an A-wrap in the flat for 15 rows, so we're back up to 15 now. So from here to where we are now, this one was 15, this one was 18, this one was 15, this one was 12, and now we're back to 15, aren't we? Are we? Yes, we're back to 15. <laughs> so, again, as we have done, just in the flat, back and forth, for 15 rows. Once you've got your 15 rows, done come back to the video and we'll move on to the next section okay we've now done our 15 on this one so again gonna cut our yarn leaving a little working length and we're gonna take stitches <laughs> 23 and 22 and flip them back onto 21 and 20 so we're going to start taking 22 down to 21 and then 24 down to 20 yep yeah. and now for our somewhat of our last section really um we're going to cast on the empty five pegs we have here. So we're going to cast on 23. No, that's wrong. 22. <laughs> Nearly. We're going to cast on pegs 22 to 2. Okay, so again, we put in our slip stitch. It's going to, again, become the first... Stitch on our cast on. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Pull that tight. And as I said, pegs 22, 23, 24, 1, 
and two. And we are going to, once again, e-wrap these and knit them in the flat for 18 rows. One eight. So we're back to 18. Um, again, using our end pegs as turning pegs. So I'm going to allow you to go and do your 18 rows. And then I forgot to mark the last one, didn't I? And then come back here and we'll move on to the next part. Okay, so I've now done my 18 rows there and this is, this is what we're left with at this point. So again, I'm going to cut that to a working length. Leaving working length, not to a working length. And again, I'm going to take... My last two stitches from pegs one and two and move them across to 24 and 23. So we're going to take peg one across to peg 24. And we're going to take peg two across to peg 23. Yep. Again, if it comes loose, just pull it in. Now, this is the part where things, where we have to do all the movie round of stitches. Because basically, when you look at it, you'll see where we've moved the stitches... We've kind of folded our work over here and there to get it all on the loom. Now, what we need to do is unfold this, but we want to do it in a way so that they all overlap in one direction. And so it looks quite neat. So here's how we're going to do that. We're going to take our trusty, whatever you've got, hair clips, safety pins, <laughs> actual stitch. Some of you might actually have actual stitch markers. Some of you are probably aren't always looking to improvise craft <laughs> equipment for cheaper alternatives like I am. But, you know, whatever we've got. Paper clips, open up paper clips, they work really well as well. Okay, so we're going to start here and, and go around. So these two are really easy. We don't need our stitch markers here. We can just open these straight back across. We can move our extra stitches from two and three straight back over to one and two. That's that's a nice simple bit done. Now this gets a little more complicated because we want to move the stitches from three and four, the extra ones. They're not three and four. Yeah, they are. No, they're not. One, two, three, four, five, six. From five and six back across to these two. But as you can see, there's an extra one. So if I move this one back to here, I'm going to end up with three on and I don't want three on. So... I can see these two need to come across, back across. You know, you can look, you can see where it's folded over. You can see it needs to unfold that way. But this is going to get in the way. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that on onto the little safety clip there. Yeah, and just leave that hanging in the middle. And then I can open these back up. Yeah. There we go. And the same here, you can see. I've got the it's not on the peg now, it's hanging. It's hanging on my safety clip. But it would have been on there. So you can see I need to move these two back to here. But this one, this one's gonna get in the way. So again, I'm just gonna take my safety clip. I'm gonna close it up to keep that stitch nice and safe, and I'm gonna pop it off. And then I'm going to move this one back over onto here. Ah, come around. <laughs> I'm not going to get tangled up. And then I can lift, lift safety peg here. Safety peg. <laughs> I hate that term. I'm going to leave stitch on safety peg here onto there. And then you can just slip this off. Yeah. Okay. You can see these are all starting to open up nicely. Again, if they come a bit loose, you might need to pull on these working ends, but it's there. Now again, where are we up to? Okay, so as you can see, safety peg. And this one, need to unfold that way onto here. Now, because this was a long one, because this was where we did eight stitches in one block, 
there's none there to get in the way so this is really easy all I have to do here is move that one back over and then pop the one on the safety pin back over yep okay so if you look down from the top now you can see yes that one's loose because it's but we can just pull that tight um you can see how they're all unfolding and they overlap almost like sort of flower petals they all lap onto one another that way instead of just being everywhere yeah okay so where are we up to so we look you can look down you can see where you're up to you can see where there's still falls there's one here so again i know i need to take this one and it's going to need to come across to here hello dave i, I don't need help no I, I i don't require assistance Off. bye bye okay so this one needs to come across to here but as you can see already a stitch on it so we'll just secure that on the safety pin or whatever you're using and it can go down there and then we'll open these ones back up as well comes across and that one comes across seriously dave no yeah we've got a kitten called dave it's a bit weird wait, wait. He, he thinks he's a person it's fine okay so we've got the, <laughs> those on there and now as you can see because we're we're near the end we're almost there we need to move look down and see safety pin it's nice actually because they're shiny so they stand out you can see where you're up to so we've got a safety pin and one here need to come across here so again one of the one safety pin stitch is going to end up on as this one and we don't want three stitches crowding it so we're going to take the top one off and hold it in place and then we're going to take there's safety stitch. Here's one next to it. So this one comes up and over. Goes on. And then safety pin stitch comes across. Goes on. Safety pin can come off. Well, I messed that up, didn't I? I made a meal of that. There we go. <laughs> and now again, we're in the last bit. I can see my safety pin. I know it's going to come across to here. Because we're at the end, there's no stitch that needs to be moved out of the way. So that's nice and easy. So we're just going to flick this one onto there. And then safety pin stitch across onto there. And remove the safety pin. Now, this is probably a lesson why you watch tutorials through and full before <laughs> you try and do them but as you can see now looking down at the top all of the panels can be opened nice and flat they all overlap each other in a nice neat way yeah there's no bunching or crowding everything's and we can pull on just slightly on any of these working lengths that we left just to tighten things up and make it nice and neat yeah so this is where we are now and that was the hardest part of this whole thing over with once we're at this stage it's it's easy sailing it really is so the next thing we have to do is we are going to e-wrap in the round so literally just round and round the room the room the loom for 12 rows if you have big hands put an extra one or two rows on if you have very small hands take one or two rows off so if you've got like me like the gloves are always big on me because i've got tiny hands i could i could do this with 10 rows okay if you are a general adult size hands 12 rows if you have huge hands go for 15 okay um but you know E-wrap is such a elastic stitch. It, it's very forgiving. Okay, you can get away with a lot. But generally, I'm going to stick to our general median pattern that we're using here. So we're going to do 12 rows. Okay. So again, I'm just going to use this as my first cast on. It's going to go on to stitch one. Yep. And we're going to E-wrap every stitch 
all the way around. And what we're going to do is some stitches, obviously, because if we've just done that great stitch shuffle there to get our fingers on. Some of them are going to have two stitches on. I'm just going to secure that on my little peg. And that's fine. All we're going to do is if we have a stitch with two on, we're going to treat them as one. So we're just going to lift them up together and knit them over. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I said I was still a bit ill. Those that have one on just get knitted normally. Those with extra stitches get knitted together. Sorry, I had to break film and then have a coughing fit again. I should have been wearing gloves and I wouldn't have got cold. <laughs> okay, so we just keep going around like this. Ow, sneaky stitch. Jump back over. And it really is as simple as this. We're not going to do any more cutting of the yarn or anything like that. You might feel that some of these stitches are really loose and it'll be where you've got that end where we've cut the yarn. I say again, just go in and just pull, pull gently down on those loose ends. So I'm trying to escape there. I'll pull that back through in a minute. Um, and... It'll pull it all nice and tight again. It's nothing to worry about or be concerned about. So that's one row. I'm going to put a line there because that's two my finger section. So again, I want 12 rows. So again, it's just a case of keep wrapping, keep going round. Again, I'm just going to push this down. I'm going to, where have you come from? Your, your actual, yeah, there we go. And again, I'm just going to give these a little bit of a pull down because, like I say, some of those stitches felt a little loose. It's just really simple case of pulling everything tight. There you go. And you don't need to do this. You can just pull them all tight at the end. I just like it. So I just like the feeling of everything being neat. So that's one row done. I'm going to go... Start my second row, and again, there's no cutting yet. It is lit, no back and forward, straight round and round and round for 12 rows. So I'll let you go and crack on with that, and I will meet you back here when you've done those 12 rows. Okay, so I have now done my 12 rows in flat E wrap in the round. Now, you will have what appears to be some sort of squid like creature hanging off your loom. Now, <laughs> it's not, it's fine, it's meant to look like this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to knitting in the flat for a little while, but we don't need to cut the yarn or anything like that. All we're going to do is e wrap and work on pegs one to six. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to work these in the flat. For 30 rows, three zero, yeah. So it's quite a few rows, but it is as we did with the finger sections you knit all six on the first one because you've already got ones there, but then the end ones become turning sections. So, um, yeah, so it is literally again. Just back and forward for what seems like quite a long time, 30 rows, but it works, trust me. So I'll let you go and do those 30, three zero rows on pegs one to six in the flat six for 30 rows. And I will meet you back here when you have done them. Okay, so I've now done those 30 rows. And what you'll be left with is this. Which, if if I do this, put my hand in there, suddenly starts to make more sense. Yeah? Okay, now what we're going to do is we've ended up back on peg one. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to... 
we're going to come around we're going to keep going around basically we, we treat this as a turning peg even though we're starting to work in the round again so it gets really easy from here i'm going to cast on all the way around an a wrap And again, it's a bit odd because we are working in the round, but this has kind of become a weird little turny peg. Um, and we're going to just keep going round and round and round in the round for five rows. So just plain A wrap round and round for five rows. And then if you come back to the video at that point, we'll move on to the next bit. So I'll, like I said, just round and round. For five rows and then I will see you back here okay I've done my five rows in the round in a plain a wrap and now we're getting towards the end <laughs> we're almost at that time of making it up um we're going to do 10 rows again working in the round but we're going to switch to rib stitch and um, I've done this a few times in patterns but I'm just going to go over it so Whenever I do rib stitch, I work in pairs. So I always buddy them up. So on your first peg, you knit over as normal. On the second one, you go down, catch the yarn, pull it up and through, push it off the back and pull it over. So I'll show you that again. So the first ones, we wrap and pull it across like that. First one gets knitted off as normal. Second one, we put the hook down behind the stitch. Lift it forward, catch the yarn, pull it up and behind, making a loop, and then knit it off and replace the original stitch if you like. So, we always look at it. So, go up and over and down through, catch it, pull it up, and then switch the stitch for the new one. So, you're just going to go round and round like that for 10 rows, okay? One, zero, 10 rows, and then I'll see you back here. Okay. We've now done our 10 rows of rib stitch. So this is what we are now looking at. It kind of looks like a glove. Cross between a glove and a squid, maybe. <laughs> okay, what we need to do now is we need to make this up and get it off the loom. So I'm just going to wrap my yarn around a few times um, to get a good working length on it and cut it. There we go. Eee. Now... You don't actually need to cut this one before you take it off because the way we're going to do a cast off. Now, if if you do loom knitting yourself a lot, you're not a beginner, you have a favourite method of cast off, go for it. However you want to do it, go for it. Um, the way I'm going to show you is a one that I think is easy and it works well with a rib stitch because it has to be quite elastic. That's why we put the rib stitch on. So what I do is I take off peg number 24 and then I wrap I pull through and I go to peg number one take that off pull that little wrap we made up and over then I get the yarn round again pull it through now if you remember earlier on I said if you have a crochet hook this is a lot, can be a little easier, and I'll show you for why. I'm just going to literally switch that stitch out and pop this on a crochet hook. And anyone who's crocheted will know this, will will, will recognise what I'm doing instantly here. If you do that, you basically, all you have to do is you basically use them both. And it, it becomes really, really quite quick and easy to just... Well, this isn't the best crochet hook in the world to do. Take one off, pop it on, pull it through. You can do this nice and quickly. You could do this with two knitting hooks as well, I suppose. But you 
yeah, I just find this is a really nice, quick and easy way of doing it whilst keeping some elastic on the on the the work. Where you've just put that nice ribbed cuff on. You want to keep it like that. So basically, ah, get on. Gonna go around the whole circle, the whole loom like this. Basically, you know, pulling them through and casting off in this manner. So I'm gonna let you do that. I'm not gonna make you watch me do the <laughs> the whole thing. And once you've got your whole work off of the loom, come ah, come back. <laughs> okay, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so we've pretty much got it off the loom. I'm just gonna literally pull this through into a knot. Ah, don't go too tight. And leave that there. Where's my needle? Use it a tie secure or not. But first what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this inside out. So give it a shake. This is <laughs> Retrieve the thumb. Now, the first thing we're going to do is finish securing that. So, down a needle. That's a nice amount of stretching it. Just tie a small knot in there. I'm always so careful when I start doing videos and yeah, at the end I've got threads flipping everywhere. Right, okay. <laughs> okay, so. We'll just pop a small knot in. And work. And end in. Now what you might notice once you start looking at this work, now you've got it off the loom, is that some of the gaps in the stitches do look quite big. And that does happen when you're making pieces like this where there's lots of sort of joining pieces together. Like by the thumb there. You can see this. Yeah, obviously this is going to get stitched. But you can see you've got quite big gaps here. Because of the way knitting works, you will find once you've, you're kind of wearing the piece you've made um, and, you know, you've made it up, you do tend to find they write themselves a lot with their tension in. But if it's really bothering you that one stitch is a bit bigger than another one, you know what, just just put a stitch in it. No one's going to know. Just literally sew it. No one's, no one's going to know. Now, where where are you coming from? Which thread are you? Where are you? You're coming from up there. This is one of the things with this. You are going to want to make sure all your threads are... Somewhere you've left them. Somewhere sensible where you've left them. The thumb won't have any because we didn't cut it. But these will. And you, what you probably want to go and do is just pull all of these one at a time. Make sure all those stitches at the top. I mean, don't yank them, you know. <laughs> don't like <laughs> rake on them. But just give them a gentle, a gentle tug and make sure... You know, like there, you can see we've got a very loose stitch there. So you just give it a gentle pull and it just tightens everything back up. You know, just keeps everything neat whilst we make it up, which is what we're about to do. So we are going to start with the fingers first. And I know if this is the first time you've seen this, you're going to be looking at this going, what the heck is that? <laughs> that is a mess. There is There is yard everywhere. Let's just separate it out into what it is and it work through it from there. I'm just going to move all these out of the way. Now, we don't need you. You can all go away. We just need our trusty darning needle. So, as you may have worked out, this is our thumb. And then we've got four fingers here. So, your index finger is there. 
it needs to be stitched along the top and down the side you then have two 18 long 18 row long pieces here which need to be stitched up across the top and back down together yeah you have two 15 row long pieces here which need to be stitched up across and down and you have your little pinky finger which just needs to be stitched across the top and down now i'm going to sew all these up using a very basic whip stitch i'm going to use all of these loose bits and pieces i've got here where i said leave your length on because you've got all your threads in place to do the making up with now and i am going to do it via a whip stitch if you can use any stitch you want it however you want to join these pieces together i mean obviously you know with yarn not a stapler you know common sense um, <laughs> but any which way you want to do these you know you just catch your edge you just catch your outside stitches there look for the little v's which you get from doing those turning pegs and you stitch them together okay so just go over that again you've got thumb you've got your index finger there which we're stitching together which you come up and across the top You've got two 18 row long pieces, which will form your middle finger, which you're stitching all the way over. You've got two 15 row pieces, which will be your ring finger, which you're going to stitch up and over. And you've got your pinky finger there, which wraps around and you just do the end and down the side there. I'm not going <laughs> to record me doing all of this stitching because it'll get very tedious. You know what you're doing with this. Very, very simple. Um, once you've done the fingers, come back. And we'll do the thumb. Okay, so I've done the fingers. Now I'm going to do the thumb. Now I know a few of you are probably looking at this going, that looks huge. It's a promise. If you have a normal size adult hand, it's about the right size. Just for comparison, my hands are tiny. I can't overstate this enough. This is a normal size safety pin in my palm. This is a normal biro. Okay, my hands are tiny. Okay, they're child size hands. So... And the, I, I can get away with wearing these. They're just a little bit, um, they're just a bit loose. So they're fine. Now, to do the thumb, because we haven't got any sort of make up bits hanging off of this, because we didn't um, sort of cut it, it was all done as one section. I'm just going to cut a length of yarn. You can see all these bits. This is just where I've pushed the ends in and trimmed them up a bit to keep the fingers neat. So we're going to have to attach, attach some, so. <laughs> Let's do this. Now to do this, all I'm going to do is find a stitch, go through, tie it on. And again, the thumb, you can see it there, we just need to go up both sides. Now, the end is obviously attached on here. And you've got a couple of options. You can either do this and do a separate run of sewing with separate threads up each side and tie it at the top. Or what I do, because I'm lazy, <laughs> is I just kind of loop it across the top and go straight back down the other side. But that really should have been the name of this channel, shouldn't it? The Lazy Knitter. No, that is me to a T. No. You can see we're just catching the stitches here all those little v's you can see there's a little bit of a of a gap there but as i said with these things they do tend to tension themselves up after the first sort of run through the laundry or just with general wear if it really bothers you like just Put a stitch in it, it's fine. No one's going to know. <laughs> there are no such thing as incorrect stitches on this channel. They're just creative interpretations of the pattern. Oh, they yeah. <laughs> are. It's 
Bob Ross can make smudges into birds. We can make slightly incorrect stitches into interpretive embroidery. Okay, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> And I'm just going to loop across the top. Now, the way I do this is I tend to do it in little looped stitches like this. So it kind of fits in with the, with the pattern of the yarn and I don't pull it too tight. Here we go. As long as you don't get it. Incoming a little, maybe. Just to nip in the, the shape of the top of the thumb. There we go. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that will work. And then back down the other side. And do when you're doing this, make sure... I try to make sure you get the... The actual little V shapes that are really on the edge. Um, sometimes they roll slightly and you end up sort of going into the front of the stitches or the back of the stitches. And it's not the end of the world if you do. It, it just narrows those, um, those finger sections slightly. You know, it, it's a little tighter. You don't have as much stretch in the, the fingers and things if you do that. And make sure you, you you nip this there and you don't accidentally sew the front of it to the back of it. It's one good thing with stitching yarn though because it's quite loose stitches. If you do make a little bit of a mistake, you can normally pick it back out quite easily <laughs> and just redo it. It's bad. Okay. Now I'm just going down into the palm section a little here because, as I said, there were some slightly loose stitches, so I'm just going to pick them up. And just use this to tighten them through a little. There we go. And then we're just going to tie this off. A little knot. I'm just going to run this back through a little to tidy, keep all the threads nice and tidy. Is that all of them? I don't have any other loose ones. Ah, you're attached. Let's work you in somewhere. And then all we do is flip this the right way in. You have to kind of get all your fingers <laughs> to play and go the right way as well. Just give it a shake. And <laughs> she says, with it not working. <laughs> there we go. Get those fingers back out. And the pinky finger, where are you? <laughs> Come on. There we go. Glove. Now, like I was saying, you can see there's a few bits that the tensioner needs to just start to sit right a little bit better. Um, but I say put them through the laundry. Obviously, if you're using 100% real wool, be careful with that. I tend to, when I'm making quite functional pieces like this, I tend to, to use blends or acrylic yarn as much as I love natural fibres. Cotton's quite a good choice as well, actually, as a natural fibre. 
Um, if it's stuff that I'm going to need to wash a lot, you know, practicality sake, make it something that you can you can throw in the laundry fairly easy. And there we go, glove, glove, yay! Really warm glove. And as I say, this is quite big on me, but once again, tiny hands. So there you go. Where's my other one? I'm gonna put them both on. <laughs> warm hands. Now, as I said, this is for the first time to try it and see if it works. Um, we are going to put a written and kind of follow along little sort of stitch by stitch check sheet on to Patreon as a PDF downloadable pattern, um, which you can go and download um, if you are a patron. If you would like to become a patron, um, that would be very much appreciated and I will put the link down below. Thanks, guys. There'll be another photo up on the community pages soon for who for the next project. Please remember to click if you like this, give it a thumbs up and click subscribe.